Hello, everyone. Um, I'm just waiting while everybody starts to pop on to the webinar. So welcome to all those that are coming on um, to our course, course Coat webinar. And it's sponsored by Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, I Envy, Angels Grooming Apparel, so I'm just going to give you guys a minute for people starting to come on and then I'm just going to start the introduction. Um, obviously also brought to you by Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. Well, maybe not obviously to some people. I'm just going to move my light a little bit because it's blinding me. Okay, so we are going to get started. Um, welcome everyone to the Course Coat INV Angels Apparel Grooming Webinar and it is brought to you by Leading Edge Dog Show Academy and sponsored by Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, um, INV and Angels Grooming Apparel. Um, and we are really, really happy to have them on board with us. So for those of you that don't know, my name is Allison and I was a professional dog handler for more than 30 years. I've been involved in purebred dogs for 45 years, so since I was seven years old. And throughout my career as a professional dog handler, I have won more than 550 best in shows all over the world. And I have competed internationally. I have had top dog all breeds in Canada three times. I've won at Westminster, I've won at the World Show, I've won at Crufts. And throughout my career, I have had the privilege of showing and grooming all breeds of dogs. And I think that brings a unique perspective to what I bring to you because I have tried most of the products that are out there. Um, now that I have founded the world's first online dog show school, um, I keep getting sent products to try. So I am willing to share the information that I have with you. And just please, please, please ask questions anytime you want. And um, by ask, you know, asking questions, you can email them to me even during this webinar. If you want, we do have a Q&A function. You can type in your question as we go along and we will do our best to answer as many as we can at the end, um, time permitting. So welcome. Thank you. Stay safe. Um, uh, it's really important that we're all doing this together. And I really do want to thank our sponsors, Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, IMV, Angels Apparel, because we, they are bringing you things to do, um, some form of education during this time when we are all shut down. So I think that that is really important. And throughout this webinar, I am going to take a sip of my water, a sip of my tea, just because I talk a lot and um, I get a little dry. So I'm trying not to be rude. I'm just telling you that's what happens during my webinars. So I'm going to start sharing my screen with you. And without much further ado, we will get started. Except for some reason, I think I am on the very last slide, which is kind of unfortunate. So give me one moment to get to the beginning. So here we are. Welcome to our course coat type grooming classroom. Uh, as I said, my name's Allison. I'm Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and this is presented to you by Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, INV, and Angels Grooming Apparel. So course coated dogs, they're not limited to, to Shelties, Aussies, Poodles, Goldens, you know, anything that kind of has that double coat. Bichons can be put into that category. Um, and so these are the coat types that we are going to be talking about today. Um, our wonderful sponsors, Groomers Pro and Wheatley Wears, are bringing you four of these classrooms. So this week's the first one, and it'll be followed up by drop coat, smooth coat, and wire coated coat types. So stay tuned for those. Um, things to note. As I said before, you can use a Q&A function in the Zoom webinar. It's at the bottom of your screen. Just click on it, type in a question where you get to as many as we can at the end. Um, please submit them all the way through the webinar um, because we only have time to take them at the end, but this way they're ready to go and you're not typing it in as we sign off. Um, if you have a question about something we've discussed, please try to note that in the question. 
Um, again, our sponsors, I'm going to tell you a lot about them because we can't bring you this free content without them. Okay, so through <clears throat> the generosity of our sponsors, um, you can get some great discounts on all the things that they sell, uh, including a lot of the things that we are going to feature during today's webinar. So for Groomers Pro, I envy Angels Grooming Apparel, any of their websites, their code is COURSE, all in capitals, 15, for 15% 15 off any of their websites. Um, the code expires at midnight, basically, on Sunday, so the following Sunday, which is May 17th, so the Sunday after this webinar. But a little birdie told me that next week, if you turn, tune in to the webinar, they will have another code for that coat type as well. Um, I and and Angels Grooming Apparel are available through the Groomers Pro website, but you can also go to their individual websites to get more information. As well, our wonderful sponsors up in Canada, Wheatley Wears, you can use the code LEDSA for Leading Edge Dog Show Academy for 10% off until June 11th. Um, and they have all the Chris Christensen products we're bringing you today, I Envy, as well as Angels Grooming Apparel. And if you would like uh, any more information about any of our courses, so we have grooming courses, handling courses, um, webinars like this, all available at Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And you can use the code webinar35 for 35% 35 off of anything in our school, including our whole school subscription until June 11th. And that's at leadingedgedogshowacademy.com. And we have tried through these slides um, to get you all of their social tags, all of their websites, everything that you need to connect with them. And after today's webinar, you are going to be emailed a, co a copy of it, or it'll be posted somewhere that you can get it, and then you can access all the codes again. So we're going to start off with Angel's Grooming Apparel. So here I am wearing an Angel's Grooming Apparel uh, smock, and I'm going to show you my pockets. Um, I'm going to get off, let you see it in bigger in a moment. So basically how Angels Grooming Apparel started was this. After seeing what was available in the market, uh, Angel decided that she could do much better, right? Because the fabrics were kind of not great, they weren't comfortable, and they weren't really designed for like actual dog groomers. They were designed for like hairdressers or other things. And she wanted something that was high end because, you know, groomers like we work really, really hard. You work in the salon all day long and you want to look good and feel good while you are doing it, right? So there's nothing that's gonna make you do a better job than feeling good and looking good. So she talked to a lot of groomers and she you know, took what they suggested into making her line. So uh, everything that they make at Angels is actually made in Los Angeles. So it's you know basically made as locally as we can get it. Um, and the entire line is designed and to be interchangeable and to have different looks, et cetera. So this is really, really useful, especially for the kind of breeds that we're talking about today, because though, you know, those double-coated breeds, especially this time of year, we're all getting the, the de shedding. Um, we're getting, you know, all the blowouts that we have to do in the hair is just tries to stick to everything, but it's not going to stick to your angels grooming apparel. Um, they are quite unique, and I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a moment. Um, and they are quite unique in that just the way they are actually made to be light clothes. Like the zippers are really, I'm going to stand a little bit further back. The zippers are really great. I love the pockets. And they come in like some really, really great patterns if you go on their website and see more than what I can offer you. But you can see how the back of this one. Um, is vented so it keeps you nice and cool when you're working with those dryers all the time um, like I said tons and tons of great colors I actually the, my hardest decision was when they said what color do you want us to send you I didn't know so yeah they are um, great comfy stylish and like I said we all want to look great while we're doing our job and I think that is really important um, and I'm going to share my screen again here with you here we go so yeah here's some more great patterns and stuff that they have you can see like a more a-frame apron and that damask pattern is really really popular which is why i think i didn't get one because i think that they're so popular they wanted to save them for all the groomers out there that were purchasing them 
So thanks to Angels Grooming Apparel and remember, you can get a discount on that. Okay, so this is the thing I am the most excited to bring to you this week. And it's called I Envy. And for those of you who are brand new to me, you won't know, but for those of you that know me and have been to my webinars, um, eye staining is something that I have always had a really firm opinion about. Um, tear stains are unsightly, whether it's your dog, your cat, um, your family pet, whether it's, you know, you own a grooming salon and you have a lot of dogs coming into your grooming salon, no matter how good your groom is, it is ruined by a dog with a lot of tear staining. You just can't make those faces look as pretty um, when you're sending them out of your salon than when they have eye stains. And it's, they're just a bear, right? Eye stains are a bear to deal with. Then you go next level, show dogs. Nobody wants that on their show dog. It's, it's probably the biggest question that I've ever gotten is how to get rid of tear stains. And tear stains, but not only the tear staining, but the staining between the toes on lighter colored dogs, that pink red staining, um, the, the staining in the beard for beards that have a lighter colored beard, or even, you know, the darker colored dogs with a beard that get the staining is so bad you can still see the red in a black or a gray beard. Um, you know, it, it is a huge, huge problem in the industry, whether you are a pet groomer or showing your dogs or simply you're a family pet. Nobody likes to look at their beautiful white Maltese or their beautiful light colored dog that they bought to just like be the cutest little dog they've ever had. And it has these unsightly tear stains. And it is something across the board that is just a problem. Now, I have had a couple homemade recipes over the years that have worked really, really well on tear staining. But they, to be honest, they are a little bit hit and miss because it's how good you prepare the recipe that I tell you, how, re how well I remember to tell you, how great those ingredients are that you can purchase because in different areas you can purchase different quality of products and then you're mixing them together. And I'll say mix it together like um, a thin toothpaste, well, that could be different to you than to me, right? And I have always, always recommended colloidal silver. Well, then all of a sudden came this product called IMB, which was everything that I have believed in over the years of, and everything that I have used in all of my years of, of grooming dogs, of presenting dogs, of owning dogs. And it is absolutely amazing because it is all the things that we want in a kit that is completely safe. So um, these kits are unique. Uh, they work like nothing else I have ever seen. And I am just so excited to bring it to you. So here we will go. So um, I wanna talk to you a little bit about eye staining. So first of all, eye staining can come from several, several different sources. So it can come, the typical source is in our smaller dogs with the smaller eye shape that the tear ducts in that smaller eye are just so small that just everyday debris from living in the city, from other grooming products, from just being in the dust in your house can actually clog those little tiny ducts so quickly. And that to me is the most common form of staining. And you know, veterinarians will want to flush out those ducts or try to make them a little bit bigger, which you know, it is a problem in itself. Um, some dogs just have excessive tearing. So the, you know, they just produce too much tears for their eyes. They're always blinking it out and then it gets onto the face and it causes like a little bacterial growth. Um, you know, like bacteria just likes to grow in these damp tear troughs that dogs have. And, you know, especially the hair, whether they all have some kind of hair under their face, right? Unless you have a crested or a Mexican hairless. And then that just breeds bacteria and you get that red staining. And it's the same kind of bacterial growth, that yeast infection that they get under their eyes, sometimes under their ears, in between their toes, sometimes around the tails, especially on those bully breeds. Um, te tearing can also happen from teething, quite common, especially in those smaller ones. Um, it can happen from just irritants, like I said, like some people only have dogs that tear, like at dog shows or some people will buy a puppy and it's not tearing but they'll move from the country to the city or somewhere and just like the different irritants and allergens will cause them to tear. 
Um, food can cause your dog to tear, like have tear staining as well, as well as staining between the toes and around the bum. And some people will um, switch to a non-allergenic food, but what they don't realize is that they haven't switched their treats. So sometimes it's the treats that's actually causing the problem. So people aren't doing both things at once. So always, always, if you're changing food to relieve a problem, make sure that you're also changing your treats or eliminating treats and maybe using the food itself as a treat, which is typically what I do. Um, the water where you live, if you live in an area that has really, really high minerals or sulfur or in their water, then that can cause tearing as well, which is a huge, huge problem. That is why there, like, there's such a broad spectrum of things that can help. Like people say, only give your dog, your white dogs distilled water, right? Because, and that can work. It does, it can work, but it's only going to work if water is the problem, right? Because there is a list of things that can be the problem. Personally, I like you to, you know, if it's like excessive dark, super dark staining, I really do recommend that you take your dog to a veterinarian first, just to like rule out some of those other things, especially if your dog is scratching at their coat a lot. Um, and in some cases, people think that fleas can cause eye staining. I mean, I can, I understand that theory. For me, that's not a, the biggest problem because, you know, pretty much if we're really concerned about our dog's face and tear staining, we've already eliminated the problem of fleas. And I, you know, so um, I, I get that it could be, you know, the, the area around the eye is itchy. So the dog's irritating it more and that's why maybe they're getting staining. For me, that's not the biggest problem, but certainly something, you know, if you, you know, have a cat that goes outside and your cat, you're using this on cats because it's also safe for cats or, you know, in the salon, you're using it for cats that come in. I do like understand that um, theory just because, you know, fleas can help that. So those are the reasons that we can have um, eye staining. So going back to IMD, the products themselves, um, they are completely safe for your pet. They are all natural ingredients and they are all human grade. So they haven't taken something and found the cheapest version of it. They are using human grade things. With all eye envy products, we are not putting it in the eye. Okay, we are putting it on the staining around the eye, the staining around the butt, the staining under the ear, the staining between the toes. Um, but you don't have to worry if some does get into the eye because it's going to be safe, right? But that's just not where we're putting it. The other thing I like about IND is, is that it, it's a topical treatment, right? So it's treating the stain where it is. And you're going to see a difference in days and weeks instead of weeks and months, like things that are ingested, right? So a, a lot of people, myself included, I have used ingestible eye treatments, um, which are basically a form of antibiotic. So your, your dog has a low grade infection and we are treating it with a low dose antibiotic. And um, when we are doing it with that antibiotic, um, it can, the reason why veterinarians don't really want us to do that is because then if we need the antibiotic for something else, um, you know, we might have to adjust the antibiotic that we use because we have put them on an antibiotic. Now, that being said, I have done that myself and I do understand that. But the reason I am so, so excited about INV is because it is all the topical things I have talked about in my more than 30 years as a professional handler wrapped up into these neat, breezy little kits that are not expensive. The price point is literally half or a third of what I assumed they were going to be when I first looked at how amazing this system was. Um, so without further ado, we are going to get started. So, oh, and also INV, it does go hand in hand with beards. So I am gonna talk a little bit about beards as we go along, just so that I don't double up on absolutely positively everything that I say. So the facial cleanser is step one. So the facial cleanser, which is right here, and you can see a picture of it right there in front of you, and I should just make sure that my pump is turned on because I turned it off yesterday. Um, so the facial cleanser um, gently washes away crusty debris and the eye discharge. So if your dog has little crusty tears, it's going to help wash those away. And just the bulk of the discharge that is around the eye. You can also use it in the beard, also between the toes, also around the butt of your dog. So um, 
The cleanser contains colloidal silver, which is a natural antibiotic, one of my favorite remedies for almost everything, at 30 parts per million. So it is foamy, it's a tearless formula, so it's safe for puppies and kittens as well. And we want you to use this instead of a whitening, brightening, or bluing shampoo. And a note about the INV system is that if you have previously used whitening, brightening, or bluing shampoos, or sometimes just other shampoos, you are going to have a slower time seeing a result, seeing that stain pull out, because the hair has been made more porous, um, especially by whitening shampoos. And so the more porous hair is gonna hold on to that stain for longer. So not only does the cleanser contain colloidal silver, but it also contains aloe vera. So aloe vera, as we most of us have used that, is um, antibacterial, anti-inflammatory, antifungal, and it kills bacteria, but at the same time, it like nourishes the skin and the hair that has the staining on it. So that is in the cleanser. So any of us that have ever put aloe vera on a sunburn or any kind of burn that we've had, we know the soothing relief that we get and your dog or cat's face is going to get that same relief. It has argan oil in it. Argan oil is great because it's gonna help restore that hair shaft and put a little bit of shine back in it. So it's gonna nourish the hair shaft. And the, the reason that the hair shaft needs nourishment is because that bacteria and yeast have been like breaking down at that hair shaft um, the whole time that your dog has had that staining. It contains um, avocado oil, another natural anti-inflammatory, antibacterial um, element that has vitamin E in it, which is great for the skin. Um, it also has coconut oil. Of course, everybody knows coconut oil is the miracle oil for the, like the last five years. Again, coconut oil is also antifungal, antimicrobial, but is antiviral as well. And it mimics um, other antibiotics and helps get rid of bacterial infections. So all of those things are really, really natural and they're all found in this tear stain facial cleanser, which you can also cleanse the beard and between the toes with. So um, I do have the lovely and talented Fifi here. Um, oh, sorry, Katie, that I slid my uh, computer instead of picking it up, but I am going to demonstrate um, on my own dog, if you give me one moment here, I need to put Fifi under the table. Come on, May. Come on, let's go up here. Okay. So, you also want to stop the screen sharing, Allison? Yeah. yeah. Good idea, Catherine, because I would have forgot it. Okay, and how's Ellie Mae there? Uh, good, it's a bit dark. If you can maybe. Yeah adjust the light a little bit. Yep. Uh, is that, That's getting better. Is that better? So, I don't really know how to work this light. There we go. How's that? It's better, yep. Yeah. yeah, I did want to show, show that it does work on a black dog. All right, so here's Ellie Mae, and we can see that she doesn't really have any staining, any red staining, maybe like a little bit on her beard. And I've left her face a little bit longer for this. She does have a little bit of a crusty, like right here in her eye. Um, so I'm going to take the facial cleanser, and I'm just gonna like put a pump. So that's just one pump for the eye. And I'm just going to like, wipe it all around this area, loosening up that little thing, and I'm just going to work it in with my fingers all through this area. Now, in the next couple of weeks, we are going to have a smooth coat video. I'm going to do this on a French Bulldog, show you how to do that, um, and I do have Fifi to show you how to do it on a long coat dog, but in another YouTube video, we have shown you how to wash the face and um, rinse it out with water. Now, what I prefer to do, especially if you're doing this every day, every day it might not be convenient for you to get your dog in the tub and rinse it with water. So I'm gonna take some old face cloths and once I've washed that face, I'm gonna use this, it's, it's slightly wrung out, and I'm just gonna keep wiping away at that crusty, Part around the eye and just keep wiping that as much as I possibly can. And like I actually have two uh, face cloths so I can go again. This one is still quite down. I'm just going to wipe all of that away. And to me, 
I like this method a little bit better than always washing it. Obviously, if they're in the tub, you could rinse it out. But if you're if you're at home, um, if you're doing this every day, which we recommend that you do it every day till the staining is gone, and then once a week to just kind of keep it up. This is how I would do it: is with the face cloth. That's so you're gonna have a set of face cloths, old ones that you had that are just for your eye envy. And I'm going to share my screen again. And here we go. Doo -doo. Um, so that is step one. So that is step one for the around the eye and also for the beard. You could do it in between the toes. If you had staining between the toes, you would do it in between the toes, the folds around the butt, um, especially on those short coated breeds like a bulldog. But you know, some longer coated breeds do get staining there as well. Anywhere there is that red, yeasty bacterial staining is the place that you are going to use this. Okay. So the next step, and for, I was gonna show you this at the end, but this doesn't make any sense. So the whole eye envy kit, you can buy everything one at a time or you can buy everything in a kit. And I just want you to show you how the kit comes and the kit comes um, without the cleanser that I showed you, but with the solution, the pads, the powder, and this little powder brush that you can see right here. And the reason that I can't show you that at the end is because I need the stuff out of it. But little did I know, that I should have done it. Okay, so the next step, step two, and this is for the eyes. So remember, if you were using um, the beard cleanser, you would still use the step one, the same cleanser on the beard between the toes. But for the eyes, step two is the remover solution. And this comes in a refrigerated formula and a non-refrigerated formula. Basically, they're both the same, but um, the product line did start with the refrigerated formula, but then there was such a great call for this product overseas, et cetera, et cetera. They came out with the non-refrigerated formula so that it could be sent farther away. And it wasn't quite as finicky, like if you're on the road or whatever, you could take it with you. And part of step two is also the applicator pads. So the applicator pads look like this. And you might say, well, why do I need the applicator pad? Why can't I just use a cotton ball or a, you know, your own little makeup pad, which you could. But the reason you're not is because your cotton ball or your makeup applicator pad definitely has a different texture than this. I can tell you that because I use these same round applicate like makeup pads, the cottony ones myself. They have a completely different texture. So the cotton ball or the cotton makeup applicator pad are just going to soak up more of your product and your product is not going to last it very long. These are not expensive at all. They come as part of the kit. So to me, it's a no brainer that you are going to use this. Um, so both the beard stain remover and the eye solution contain uh, boric acid, which is a natural drying agent. Um, it's a really, really great product and it contains witch hazel and again, colloidal silver. So this is step two and how you use that is you're going to take your solution. Oh, I guess I should stop sharing my, and remember this goes on top of the hair. Um, it acts as a natural astringent. Um, it's completely safe to use around the eye and Ellie Mae is right where she's supposed to be. And, I'm going to turn my computer screen and I'm going to put some of the solution. So I put about 10 drops on the pad and I'm just going to like move it around. So it's like kind of just going throughout the pad and I can feel it's on both sides of the pad, like quite damp. So it's not drying into the pad. And then that whole same area um, that I got wet, I'm, I can go right up to the corner of the eye because it's completely safe. And this is why I wanted to show you not on Fifi, but on Ellie Mae, um, just so that you could see, I could go right up to the eye and it would be completely fine. And, you know, again, if you were doing a dog that did have staining between the toes, um, you could, like, after you've cleansed the toes, go between the toes like this. And it's really, really going to help you get rid of all that nasty staining that is between the toes, all right? So, so far, easy peasy. But remember, these are all natural ingredients that aren't being ingested by your dog that work, have been proven over and over again to work. Things that I have used in the past, but now in this amazing kit, 
super simple. So there we've had step one and step two. Now, my favorite part, and I'm just going to get my powder ready. So the step three is the, the tear stain remover powder. I'm going to adjust this a little bit. Um, and the brush. So you are going to apply this around the eyes and in between the skin folds, such as on bulldogs, etc. So, um, so short haired dogs, you're going to get in all those folds. Like if your dog has a lot of wrinkles on the face, so like even bull mastiffs that get that staining here, you can just put it in between all the folds wherever you see that red staining. It is really, really important to put it there. Um, Ellie Mae is trying to get in on the action. Um, and this works like a treatment, not a cover up. Um, it's not a chalk or a cosmetic and it contains a mild cleanser and is antibacterial. Um, it also helps remove tear stains, stops the growth of bacteria, right? So this powder um, contains boric acid, which is a natural cleanser, antibacterial. Um, it's used in well-established eye treatments all over the world. Um, it relieves irritation and discomfort. In powder form, it's a pharmaceutical grade drying agent, because that's what we want. We want this area to be dried. It also contains golden seal, which mimics natural antibiotics. It contains echinacea, which is anti-inflammatory, also mimics and anti natural antibiotics. And exciting for me, it contains this herb that I've known about for a long time called Eyebright. And Eyebright has been used um, since the Middle Ages. I think it's even mentioned in Game of Thrones. And it helps reduce that reddening around the eyes. Um, it's anti-inflammatory and it contains asubin, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong, um, which is a protein that's involved in the healing process. So I think that's really important. So this is how we use it if Ellie Mae wants to lay down again. So you can use it with your finger um, and just apply it all the way around the eye. Um, or if you buy the kit, you can buy, use this little brush. And if you just plunk the little brush in it, you can see that it picks up quite a bit of powder. So you can see the powder that it picks up. And also the powder doesn't shake out of the brush like it's going to fall out of your finger. The brush comes in little and big. I like the little one. And you're just going to like put it Oops, I need to stop sharing my screen. Here we go. And we, you're just going to put it all wherever there is staining. Now, the important part about this step is that you're not just going to put it on top of the hair like this. You want to also go against the grain so that you're getting the product on all sides of the hair shaft, right? So you're going to go down, up, right to left, left to right. So you're getting it all around that hair shaft. And, you know, I would use quite a bit of this. Um, I would really get it in there, especially, you know, in the beginning when you're trying to get rid of that stain and let it really like dry up that area. You could also use it between the toes and that would really help. So I do think that this is an amazing system. It's all natural and it really works on dogs and cats. And to me, that's part of the thing that I love about it. Um, and we're just going to continue on here, Ellie May. So here is the kit. So like I show, showed you in the beginning, the kit comes in that little bag with a little instruction booklet. But of course, you can re refer to our video. And it has the applicator pads, the powder, the tear stain remover lotion or solution, and the little brush. And it retails in the US for $30, and it retails in Canada for $35, but you can, of course, um, use our discount codes and purchase it that way. Um, and the IMV beard stain remover, you would use the same cleanser, and then the beard stain remover um, comes in this spray, and same thing, once you cleanse the beard, you would just use the spray, spray it into the beard, and it not only does it smell great, um, it's made of the same ingredients as the solution, basically, in a, in a different formula, and it just really starts taking away those beard stains, which we could all do without those. So, I hope that you liked that presentation on INB. I am really, really, really excited about it. It is an absolutely 
amazing, amazing product that so many people have needed for so long. And the fact that it's all natural, it comes all prepared for you after all the years that I have promoted people just kind of like doing those things themselves, um, you will not be disappointed and it does come with a guarantee. So now we're going to move on to course code. So um, course, pre prepping the course code. So course coded dogs before they go in the tub. Um, you know, they need their ears cleaned. Uh, we like saving grace, which helps with some staining. I love the big G slicker because the big G slicker is really, really gets that undercoat out. The pins are really long. Um, so here is my big G. I haven't cleaned the hair out of it since last time I used it. So here's my big G slicker. Um, the pins are really long and lofted, so it just really helps as a de shedder. It helps on those poodle doodly type coats um, to get the matting out, but still create volume. Um, I was somebody that was always, always. Um, telling people to use the lay pooch for dematting for years and I think this is even better than the lay pooch for dematting but the difference is the lay pooch couldn't put a finish on it couldn't give you the volume couldn't give you that stylized dry and the big G slicker can do it all and the big G sl slicker comes in large it also comes in baby and a medium right so I love the large a lot of people use the baby, there is also a medium. The reason I'm showing you this one in the box is a few things. These tools, they all have a price to them. I believe in keeping them in these boxes when I'm not using them, right? So why? Because they're not going to get other brushes, other combs, other dirt, debris, things stuck in the pins. Whatever grooming box you have isn't gonna be slammed on top of it, bending these pins. Because the only time these products truly fail is when something does happen to them. So do yourself a favor, keep the box. My boxes at, are all taped up, but, and they look like crap, but my brushes look great. So with that, I would like to remind you that you should register the stuff that you buy, right? The Chris Christensen brushes and tools do come with a warranty and do yourself a favor and do that. Um, you know, and if something does happen to your tool, take a picture of it with your phone, email it to them, and you'll be surprised at how wonderful their replacement policy is. Um, another seek my two secret weapons when it comes to the course coat is the tea rake. So the tea rake is absolutely fabulous. It is a great dematting tool, a de-shedding tool. Um, it's quite heavy. It has this great handle. And the reason why I like it, the heaviness does the work for you. So it's not just all arm strength. The heaviness is actually helping you get that de-shedding done. So it can just go from one end of the dog to the other. Um, I also use a Coat King for dematting and de-shedding. And I know several grooming salons where they have had problems with coat kings, where they have like cut the dog with it or just, you know, they've gone sideways across the hair and really show dogs that have just made a big swath of cut hair. So the solution is the tea rake because the tea rake does a lot of the same action as the coat king, but there is no way you can cut them because they're not blades, right? They're the tines of a comb. And if you can see how the tines of the comb are staggered, that is why it does such an incredible job. So I would really recommend using the tea rake before your dog goes in the bath to get a bulk of that D shedding out. Um, so your poodly doodly type coats, um, Bichons, any of those things that are matting, they really benefit from the ice slip brush and the ice on ice ultra. So the reason that I like them, the ice slip brush, and I think that this is one of the tools that isn't utilized enough by anybody, whether in the salon or having a show dog or your at home pet, that you're just having a really hard time with the matting. So the ice slip brush, um, when you compare it to other pin brushes, has an advantage because if we look um, at a breezy brush, right? Great brush, but look at the pins. And then the ice slip brush is not going to do the same job, but because these pins are so short and fat, they really help get through that mat. So I'm gonna use the Ice on Ice Ultra Spray. I'm gonna really break up those mats with my fingers, spray the Ice on Ice um, detangling spray into that, and just use my ice slip brush to really like break up the mat behind the ears. And it does do a different job than this. The pins are still round ground, still nice and safe for your pet. 
Um, another, the newest product that's come out to help us with dematting is Smart Style The Cure. So it's part of the Smart Wash, Smart Groom style, um, series that Chris Christensen has. But The Cure is just, it, it's a great dematter. You can apply it directly into your fingers, into your palm, and just like rub it in between your hands to emulsify it and just work it through that mat. Um, the other way I like to do it is I like to dilute it in my magic mister and just really, so I'm going to put um, about three ounces into my magic mister, fill it up with warm water and just mist it into the coat while I'm force drying them. So I'm going to force dry them about 50% and then start putting the cure in there. And the thing about the magic mister is you're, you don't have to use it all over the dog, right? So you're not going to use it all over the dog, but when you get to those matted areas in the armpits, in the groin, um, in the stifle area, you can just hit the button on your magic mister and it's just going to come, the cure is going to come out in the dilution that you want and you are going to have great success. So this is how I like to use it. Um, if I had my magic mister all ready to go, I'm going to put, um, about three ounces in the bottom of this and then I'm going to attach my dryer hose and then as I get so I'm going to dry my dog don't have to change a tool hit my button the cure comes out sprayed right into those matted areas move away from a matted area so I'm not wasting the product on the areas that aren't matted on my dog but I am getting that cure as deep as I possibly can into those mats and that's really what I want to do when I am prepping my coarse coated dog um, so bathing. So the products that I really like for our coarse coated dogs are Clean Start. I can't say enough about Clean Start. Um, those of you that have been to my other webinars know this because Clean Start starts you from fresh every single time. It's going to get that coat absolutely positively as clean as it can be. Dirt and debris are what ruins your finish, what causes more matting. Um, Spectrum One is great for getting that texture in there. Fair Advantage is great for those really harder coated, um, coarse coated dogs. So the harder the coat, I would go to Fair Advantage. Um, it's a great shampoo for them. And then um, if you're doing a coarse coated dog with staining, I would prep the face with uh, or I would bathe the face with the facial cleanser and I would use happy eyes, which is non-irritating to the eyes as well for anything that didn't have any kind of eye staining. Um, so treating problem areas. So peace and kindness shampoo, again, my favorite product, colloidal silver is in peace and kindness shampoo. So any dog that has irritation from a hotspot that's starting, you know, you just got this dog in to groom in the salon. Uh, it's, matted, it's shedding out, and you notice that its skin is a little icky from, it's going to get a hot spot. And you know that after you've groomed it, that hot spot's going to form. The client might not be happy with you about this. Use some peace and kindness on it. It's really going to help dry that up. And peace and kindness also has a gel um, to like spot treat those short coated breeds and a spray to like really spray in layers in those coarse coated double coated breeds. And of course, we've already talked about INV, but you would treat any staining with the INV system and encourage, you know, have kits there for your clients to buy and take home and use between grooms. Um, so conditioning coarse coated breeds, I think every single groomer out there should be using after bath. Well, it's called after you bathe. I call it after bath. Um, because it cuts down your drying time by 30%. Time is money. I have groomed fully coated standard poodles one week using the exact same dryer, brush, shampoo, water, same grooming table, and then did it one week later, the first week not using after bath, the second week using after you bathe, and my drying time was literally cut down by 30%. Um, I love it. It's I dilute it eight to one. I dilute it with an immersion blender uh, in, a, in a cup so that I'm getting it fully emulsified. This product is very concentrated. You do not want to use it where you are just getting plain water than a lump of conditioner, plain water, a lump of conditioner. Do yourself a favor, emulsify that product. So it goes further and works better for you. Um, I actually had a great email from a customer in one of my other webinars who said that she never realized how using a shaker cup, because I also use a shaker cup if you don't wanna use an immersion blender. So I would use like your regular protein cup. We all have one with a little wire ball in it. and. Diluted eight to one using your shaker cup or your immersion blender, you will get 
really great results. So finishing and styling and drying. So again, I really like the tea rake. I like the extreme dryer. Um, so I would have two magic misters. I would have one with a cure in it for dogs that are matting. I would have one with bottoms up in a diluted eight to one for dogs that I just want more volume to their coat. So perhaps somebody in a salon would have the cure for their matted dogs bottoms up for the ones that they just need that more volume, that more finished look to their scissoring. Um, I like coat dressing because it's like a mousse, but it comes out in a very fine spray over your entire dog. I like the buttercomb, uh, artisan series thinners and chunky blenders. I love the fusion brushes. Um, and thick and thicker, the aerosol spray is really great for groomers who are making a more stylized trim for their clients where they have bigger legs because you can spray it in that leg to have the leg hair hold out while you trim it, but it's completely combable and the dog will not go home sticky. Also good for show people with coarse coated dogs because show people can create those styles that they want on breeds that shouldn't have hairspray and the dog will still feel like it doesn't have hairspray, but you get that holdability. It's a really, really great product. Um, with coarse coated dogs, as with almost anything, we love to talk about the stylized dry. So even though styling and correction happens with the hot dryer, you can still think about your finished product when you're using a forced air dryer. So for the first, so I, I have my dog in the tub, I have squeezed all the water out, then I've toweled all the water out. Now my dog is standing on a table on two dry towels because I want those feet to be drying automatically while I'm doing the rest of the dog. I definitely don't want my dog's feet staying wet and getting wetter throughout the drying process because that water is falling off my dog onto the feet or my dog, you know, I dry its butt, then it sits down in a pool of water on the grooming table. I do not know how many times I've seen people do that and it, that's just taking more time, right? Um, so for the first 50% of forced air drying, I'm not worrying too much about the direction of the coat. I'm just getting the bulk of the water out, right? But for the last 50%, I am starting to think about where that hair needs to go, where I want it to go to get the best outcome. Whether I am doing a dog in the salon or a dog for show, this is what I'm thinking about. Um, the stylized dry with the hot dryer, so whether you are using a stand dryer with heat, whether you're using a hand, you know, like a personal hand dryer with heat, this is where styling and correction of your dog's coat and trim really starts to happen. Um, I like to use an oblong brush when, when drying for style and correcting waves and cowlicks. So your oblong brush, so this is the oblong brush, this is a breezy brush with the longest 20 millimeter pin and the medium pad. I am really going to start like using it like a round brush, like how your stylist would use a round brush on your hair and really start to style the hair by twisting it, you know, in the opposite direction of the cowlick, etc. Um, if you struggle with drying, problem areas and they just like go back to how they're looking, I want you to dry those areas for an extra 10 minutes and I want you to make sure your dog isn't going in a wire crate, isn't going on a damp bed, isn't going on a bed with a lot of texture, you know, isn't playing with other dogs. That is going to ruin all the work you did during the stylized dry. So what do we mean by a stylized dry? So we mean that while you are drying, you are envisioning the style, the outcome of what you want your dog to look like. So like I said, so for the first 50% of my style dry, and remember most dogs I'm gonna force air dry about 80%, I'm gonna hot dry for the last 20%, right? Uh, I'm gonna hot dry for a little longer with problem dogs with problem coats, cowlicks, wavy coat. I'm going to, um, Dogs have super easy coats, super short coats. I'm probably going to um, force air dry 90% and just hot dry for 10%, but my average is 80, okay? So for the first 50%, just knocking the water out of that dog. But for the second 50% and with the hot dryer, I am going to think, like if you look at the photo on the left, I want the neck to go down. I want the top line to go straight back. I want the butt to go around and down the leg. I want, you know, most of the body hair to go down, except that chest hair needs to go forward. Then I want the fronts of the front legs, the fronts of the back legs, and the feet to all be blown up to look like they have lots of body. But the feathering on the back of the front legs needs to go down and back. The feathering or the furnishing on the hawk needs to go up. So a little bit different when we're looking at the dog 
on the right, right? We want all the neck hair to go up and out. We want the backs of the back legs to go down. We want the stifle hair to go forward and we want all the front leg hair to go up and the chest hair to go up. So this is what we mean by stylized dry. The last 50% of your force drying and all of your hot drying, you are going to be styling the dog with the dryer. Um, more examples of a heavier coated Shetland Sheepdog and a lighter coated Shetland Sheepdog, basically the same pattern, just a little bit different angles here so that we can show you what we are talking about. So with all dogs, whether you are in the salon, whether you are getting your show dog ready, whether you're at home and, you know, during COVID, you just can't get to a groomer, knowing what you want your dog to look like will make a difference in your finished products. Um, if you don't know what you want them to look like, how will you get the steps done to get there? Like you can't get there without a recipe. So say your, your client wants a dog to look a certain way. Use photos, right? Like put a photo up of either the last time you trimmed it and they loved it so you can remember what you did or what they want it to look like. Also be completely honest with them. If they bring you a dog and they want it to look like this photo and you know you can't make it look like that, you need to tell them. You need to say, your dog's hair is too matted and we need to do, use these products on it to get rid of the mats and save as much hair as possible or we need to shave it and start again. But tell them that in so many grooms you can make it look that way. Maybe even take their photo and mark it with a felt pen of what, how you're going to have to change the trim to make, you know, so that they have a realistic interpretation of what you can do. Um, for show dogs, like I've said before, find photos of the ideal you are working towards and use your artistic ability and your interpretation of the standard to get the dog to look that way. Um, so products that I recommend for coarse coat dogs in general, Clean Start, like I've talked about, Fair Advantage, Peace and Kindness. I can't stress enough how much I love After You Bathe, After Bath, because it, it just is a light conditioner that you can work on every single coat type, um, but it does cut down your drying time by 30%. It seals the cu cuticle, it makes the hair more combable. Um, Smart Style, The Cure, amazing for dematting, but try my product hack of using it in your mister because you can just use the product to get deep into that mat with your mister and the forced air dryer. It works amazing this way. And you can also save product by not always pouring it into your hand and by just not having your thumb on the mister when you're not trying to put that product in there. Um, the Artisan Chunkers and Blenders, but again, Tea Rake, for those of you that do not want to have a Coat King in the salon, uh, the Tea Rake is a great tool. Also, um, you know, th this is different than the, than the Coat King. It does do a slightly different job. It is heavier, so it does some of the work for you, especially if you're getting a lot of Samoids, a lot of Noofs, any of those kind of crosses in your salon. It's a great tool. We've talked a lot about INV. I'm a huge fan. I think your customers are going to be a huge fan of it. Um, angels wear apparel just because we want to look great. So we feel great. We send out a great product. Um, bottoms up and coat dressing, amazing products for getting that really plush, plush finish to your grooms. Spray bottles, fusion pin brushes, my other secret weapon, the big G, um, and of course the extreme dryer. All products that I recommend, all products that our sponsors have available for you, and you know what, if you have other products you want to talk to me about, ask, you know, I don't want you pouring stuff that you already have down the sink. Tell me what you have and I'll tell you where I would use it or how I would best use it. Sometimes you can even blend it with other products. You know, like I said, if you go onto Smart Style The Cure, um, onto Chris, Chris, Chris Systems website, they don't tell you to put it in a mister. It works amazing in a mister. I can do those product hacks for you. Um, so, oh, I guess I already said this, aren't I great? Remember to use our discount codes with our vendors. We want to save you time and money, and this is how we like to do it. Um, so I do have some time for some Q&A. Um, so if you don't know about me, uh, Leading Edge Dog Show Academy has a full range of grooming tutorials. You buy the grooming course, you it's yours for life. You watch a video over and over and over again. We do poodles, we do poodle pet trims, we do Shetland Sheepdog, Spaniel Setters. Um, we have all, all of our webinars as well. 
Leading Edge Dog Show Academy does do another series of webinars. We have these four for Wheatley Wares and Grimace Pro. And on Wednesdays, we have other webinars where we talk, uh, we will actually talk about iNV, but we are also going to go, we go more in depth. So if you have questions that you want to get to me, you can get to me on those Wednesday webinars. And not only do we answer your question, we answer it on a slide, just like this professionally produced in the webinar. And then in that webinar, you get the answer. So we're gonna answer it with a diagram, uh, with a step-by-step, -step, or we'll go live either on Ellie Mae or on Fifi. And we are going to tell you exactly what to do to fix your problem. So um, we're gonna go, here's the, what I just told you about, I guess I was on the wrong slide, but we do go in depth. We do have a topic every week, but the Q&A can be on absolutely any question. And if you want to have seen, we've done two classrooms already. Those webinars are two hours, um, but those webinars are up on our website at Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and you can access the ones that we've already done or join us on Wednesday. Um, so thank you. So thank you from me, Allison, Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, I Envy, and Angels Grooming Apparel. We love bringing you these webinars. We are so thankful for our sponsors, Groomers Pro, Wheatley Wears, I Envy, Angels, because they are bringing you this content for free in, during these times. I am so happy that you spent this hour with me and I'm going to get to the Q&A right now and answer as many questions as I can. Um, so, course coats. Um, course coat, oh, sorry, sorry, no, go ahead. Go ahead. So, one of the things that um, I love about course coated dogs is that we can really style them, right? We can really de shed them, we can really work on our poodles, um, we can learn how to use different products and really get them styled. Um, with, they're one of the coat types that is just the most forgiving. We can take that coat type, we can break it down so that we can get them dematted, de-shedded, and still create those beautiful outlines that the breed really deserves to see. Whether you're in the salon or whether you are at home, um, whether you are getting your show dog ready, they are really, really easy to get the outline and really practice on with these products. So if anybody wants to email us any questions regarding any of the products, any of the discount codes, how to reach our vendors, um, we would really love to hear from you. And during this time when the whole world um, is out there, the whole world is looking for things to do, um, we really, really love to have your questions and your input. Um, the last question that I'm going to get to is, um, do I delete the cure in the mister? <clears throat> so for those of you that might have missed it, no pun intended, um, I do delete the cure in the mister. So what I like to do is I like to put um, about two to three ounces in the bottom of my mister and I'm going to fill the rest with warm water and really shake it up so it's really well. It, it does emulsify really well. You don't really need your immersion blender for this or your shaker cup. It does work really well with some warm water. And then as I'm using the force dryer on my dog and I'm drying the dog, right, so the dryer goes in this end and then you can turn up or down the dilution, like um, how strong the cure is going to come out with this end. Then I can be dry, force drying my dog and I'm force drying my dog with my mister and I get to a matted area. I'm just going to press down on the button and really blast it into that armpit area. I'm going to, you know, release my finger and just keep drying the dog, drying the dog, say I get to more matting in the groin. I'm going to press down on the button. It's going to put more of the cure into that matted groin area, right? So wherever I am using the mister, um, wherever I see matting, I can just press this button, voila, I don't have to change equipment, I don't have to stop what I'm doing, I can just get the cure exactly where I like it. The other thing that I like is say you have a dog 
um, a puppy doodle, a puppy poodle that is matting kind of all over, right? I can turn the dilution down so I'm not getting quite as much of the cure out. And just like as I'm done my 50% force drying or up to 80%, I can just do a light mist throughout the whole dog to really just help with the combability in those dogs that don't have, we all know those doodle coats, even poodle coats that just want to mat, right? We are going through that humid time in some areas of the world. We are going through coat changes so you can have it turned down really, really lightly and just go through the coat. Um, we can turn it up for those matted areas, but again, I'm not wasting time because I haven't had to change anything, right? I don't have to like stop, use a spray bottle. It can be right in my mister. Again, higher concentration for the matted areas, low concentration for the area if my dog is matting all over or simply take my finger off for if it's not matting, you know, over the rest of the dog or it's cut really short in other areas of the dog and I'm not wasting the product in my mister. And my tip would be that I would probably have two misters, right? They're super, they just plug onto the end of the dryer, unplug off the dryer, so the other one could have bottoms up in it so that I'm using bottoms up for dogs that I want bigger, fuller legs. Just mark one C for cure, one B for bottoms up, and you're good to go. So that's my product hack for the cure. Um, if you would like any more in-depth questions answered, um, you can either join us on Wednesday for our webinar where we do go more in depth on your specific questions. And I just want to thank everybody out there. And again, thank our sponsors, Wheatley Wears, Groomers Pro. Please go and visit them. Uh, you'll be surprised at the pricing that they have on the products about how they're really, really good at getting your deliveries out to you so that you can work on your dogs at home. For everybody out there that joined us, um, I do appreciate the time that you do spend with us and I want you to stay safe. All right, we'll see you next week for our next webinar brought to you by Wheatley Wears and Groomers Pro. Stay safe.